So I was having crazy dreams because it was warm last night and I actually changed my AC from 67 to 68 because it was pretty cool yesterday, 57. And it's still pretty cool today, but for some reason I woke up pretty hot and warm. No big deal, but I know I had some dreams about ham and dreams about losing my shoes or something, but whatever on that. And I was listening to some, you know, uh, YouTube videos. So I know that was probably just reflecting back what I'm listening to. But I was also thinking about uh, Paris Hilton back in the 90s when her sex tape came out called One Night in Paris. And I'm thinking like, God, you know, you know, that poor girl, she went through some hell. And I know she went through her own programming that allegedly her parents didn't know would end up to be like pretty brutal that she went through. And you can read her book, go read her book. But she'll tell you everything that she went through. But um, I was thinking about like one night in Bangkok. I'm thinking one night in Bangkok makes a hard man humble. And I'm telling you, yeah, I haven't been to Bangkok. I've been to China. And when I was in China, I mean, it's pretty, it's humbling because of the, of the poverty. Not because of the sex trade. Because China doesn't, from what I've seen, doesn't promote the sex trade. Okay, literally China. And that's the thing about China. When, when I was thinking about China, well, not thinking, when I was in China and I was talking to my friend Ivy at the time and she was, we were talking about just the different Asian cultures in China. And then I'm looking at the, um, I don't know, it's like a hierarchy, a list. And I don't know where I think I've seen it. It may have been just a list somewhere that showed the different, um, Maybe currency exchange. That's probably what I was looking at. And it showed China first. And the second was, I don't know, maybe Korea. And then the third could have been, um, I don't know if the Philippines. Something. Maybe, no, I don't say the Philippines. But it was like China and Korea were the number one and two. And below that were the Philippines and Japan and Thailand and then all the other Asian countries. And what was that hierarchy? Well, there is a perception around Asian cultures that the most conservative, the most chaste, the most respectable, when you think about it, when it comes to sex and even family, is the Chinese culture. And so then I, I was talking to Ivy and she was saying, oh, we have a little bit, we, you know, we, we think the Japanese girls, Japanese, I mean, even though Japan is so highly innovative, the girls, you see what they, what they dress like, right? <laughs> the little schoolgirl outfits and it becomes highly sexualized. And so there's a lot of sex, a lot of highly sexuality in Japan. Yes. But then you look at the sex trade in Thailand and in like Bangkok and in the Philippines and these other third world countries, and you're like, good, yes, totally, I see it now. And so thinking about the, the, that, that song, One Night in Bangkok, makes a hard man humble. Oh, yeah, it's about the sex trade, it's about boxing, it's about baser level instincts in a lot of these third world countries. And then we, as first world Americans, UK, Australia, uh, Canada, okay, we're trying to copy the third world, but make it more respectable because we have better clothes, indoor plumbing, clean water and baubles and nice houses and white picket fence. We develop an illusion to make the third world respectable. But in actuality, when we take away all of that illusion, we're no different than those over there in third world countries. We're no fucking different. And so then the veil comes down. You really look at what the first world is. Okay? You seriously look at what the first world is. And it's like, it's no, it's like a type of glorified prostitution. Girls are sold into marriage, sold into slavery. Men are too. And so what I wrote was what men and women will do for survival and how they justify it. And so if you're married with no children, then you're a glorified prostitute with wife. Glorified prostitute wife, unless you're both working, even then, building a major social party life or in the academics to make your sexual union with a partner justifiable. 
And it's gay, straight, lesbian, whatever, right? I mean, if you're going to be married to someone, develop a new thought process or throw everybody a party, right? If you're going to be married to someone or else you're just for every way to have sex or travel someplace and have sex in all the different places and maybe have a family, right? And so if you're single and not married, then you're feeding off your family because you're declining, all right? You've exhausted all of your resources and now you're just trying to stay alive with the, whatever faculties you have. And so obviously, you know, um, the whole family thing is making the sexual union between people, like, respectable. Okay? And so if you're single and not married with no family, you're not actively looking for a conquest and you're all you're doing is improving yourself. Right? But nobody wants to talk about that. And so suffering of women can turn the oldest profession into something respectable. Also develops the suffering of women and men and children. The first world is not very different than the third world. We just have nicer clothes and architecture and indoor plumbing. And we feed each other stories to make what we're doing seem better than what somebody else is doing in a third world country. The illusions we build ourselves makes the suffering okay until it's not. And so when I look at people who are expanding their families, I wonder what kind of suffering they're going through. I wonder what kind of suffering the mother is going through. I wonder what kind of suffering the wife is going through. I wonder what kind of suffering the children are going through. I wonder what kind of stress the father is going through trying to feed all of those mouths. The first world came from the third world. We are still suffering, but it's more acceptable until we have exhausted the genetics line. To exhaust the genetic line, obviously look around you with the diet suddenly. It's not acceptable anymore. Fertility is extremely deadly at the micro level and the macro level. Boxing and boffing baser level instincts. The black and white checkerboard that you see all over in that video of One Night in Bangkok should, should tell you too much light and too much dark is death. Trying to come back. And regain another lifeline. When you have boffed your way out of existence and when you have boxed your way out of existence, it's brutal. Okay? I release a lot of demons. Below the waist, I release a lot of demons above the waist because of the stupid shit that I got into in the dating world, in the family and friends world. I mean, it's a battle out there. And just because you're in a family doesn't make it necessary, it doesn't make you necessarily protected. Sometimes violence, actually a lot of times violence happens in the family, but no one wants to talk about that. It's behind closed doors. And so after reading that, then let me go back and say, and look at it again. If you're married with no children, then you're a glorified prostitute wife, unless you're both working, building a major social party life or in the academics to make your sexual union with the partner justifiable. I mean, if you're going to be married to someone, develop a new thought process, right? Or throw everybody a party. So women who don't have any children and you're married to somebody. So either you guys are like party people and you're throwing everybody a party and, and all you do is traveling or going to parties or somebody is doing something with a thought process or developing something. Okay. And I'm saying to myself is in that mix. I'm not throwing everybody a party. I'm not going to parties to throwing anybody a party. I'm not um, entertaining people. I'm not enter I'm not being entertained. I'm entertaining myself. I'm learning shit. And so if you're not married and you're dating constantly, then you're a John or a Jane looking for the newest conquest. Because obviously you have to dole out money to buy company from somebody. Got to buy somebody dinner. Buy somebody a date. Type of thing. Or you're going to go do the whole oldest profession. Assuming you don't get caught. And if you're single and not married, then you're feeding off of your family because you're declining. So there's those. There's single mothers. Single fathers. And their kids are grown and, and they, they, they are divorced. And so what do they do? They hang out with their kids. They're grown children. Because what else are they going to do? They don't have anything. All Their claim to fame... If it's not in the academics or in some high-level industry or some industry, then you're going to be feeding off and parasiting off of your children. You've exhausted all of your resources, and now you're just trying to stay alive with whatever faculties you have left. Now look at your Facebook. Look at all the different single mothers, single fathers who have a lot of family and grown children, and that's all they have is their family. That's it. And they get involved with their family. They completely intervene. It's like 
what chance do these kids have when the, when the mother-in-law or the mother is constantly up in somebody's business? If you're single and not married with no family and you're not actually looking for a conquest and all you're doing is improving yourself, because what else are you going to do? You're not entertaining people. You're not being entertained. You're not entertaining sexuality. You're not trying to have a baby at 50. Um, so then what do you do? You're going to read. You're going to write. You're going to, you know, I don't know, fix something around your freaking house. But nobody wants to talk about that. And so, again, the suffering of women can turn the oldest profession into something respectable also develops the suffering of women and children. So we're not that different. So one night in Bangkok, yeah, I told you, it's pretty hard over there, but it, it, it's hard over here, but it's behind closed doors. It's not spoken. You can't speak of the hardships of what third world countries go through in the first world because we hide behind respectability. We hide behind the image, the nice clothes, the bruises on our body. We wear long sleeves. The, 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 um, the psychological bullshit that we've gone through is hidden behind so many layers of pleasure in paradise. Okay? I mean, it's crazy what, but that was the nest, that was necessary for the, for, for the, the architects of the first world to study humans, to figure out how to get the best prototype, study the culture. That's why America is like the melting pot. We're bringing people from Vietnam, from, uh, I don't know, these, these Asian countries, Hispanic countries, all these different countries, and they're bringing in their large families and their old ways, old customs, and they're bringing them here, and we're studying them. All of us are studying them. And so, <laughs> and so sometimes we hold too many redundant worlds in America, in the UK, in Australia, Canada, and even the rest of the world. And so get it on paper or get it in the toilet. Diary, diarrhea, diary of the brain, diarrhea of the butt. Very thoughtful, right? Where did I get the diary, diarrhea? I mean, I already knew it, but I didn't really say it like this. I'm watching again, I'm watching Lost. And that girl was writing a diary. And he was reading her diary. I'm thinking, oh my God, diarrhea, diary, diarrhea. <laughs> Waterfalls, right? People were getting relief through the waterfalls. Okay, back when the whole jelly juice world was, you know, up and coming back then. And so when, okay, so the, the way to control reproduction, the way to control torturous offspring, we have so many methodologies that people in the medical holistic system are getting tired of the herbal remedies, are getting tired of the pharmaceutical prescription drugs, are getting tired of all the concoctions that these women are making in their kitchen and giving it to their friends and family. <laughs> and so they develop a thing called the med bed, which is basically using frequency to silence any kind of voice in your body, the pain receptors. And that's great until there's no more voice left to silence. And then the person is silenced. And so I wanted to post my thoughts about the med bed because there's no way you could take out poop with a med bed. Med bed. There's no way to feed you through the med bed. Med bed. Oxygen is like okay, oxygen, but without food, without releasing the demons, then all they're doing is taking away your pain until there's until you can't be treated anymore. That's all a med bed is is doing using frequency, using direct energy. I don't want to say weapons because that would imply something else. But uh, that is the new world now. Because just like palliative care, at some point you can't be treated anymore. That's the whole point of palliative care and then going into hospice. So at what point would a med bed actually destroy a person? Well, you got to have a lot more life left in you to warrant having life taken away from you through pain mitigation. And so I wrote a whole thing about the med bed on my Facebook, but yeah, it has a place. I'm not knocking it as far as the efficacy for what it's intended for, but again, you can't mischaracterize things, but I want to show you those that uh, understand where I'm coming from, another confirmation and those who are contemplating, oh, I'm going to go get a med bed, just like a tanning, you know, a tanning bed. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Your own euthanasia chamber. 
Because if every time you have a pain and you go into your med bed to get, take away the pain, at some point, you'll take away your life. Now, how how long will it take? Well, I don't know. With these frequencies and the way people have are holding so much life and diversity in their body, they keep going using the med bed. At some point, they will take away their life. One day, they won't wake up. Okay? And that's kind of the, 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 the thing that I'm sure they don't say as far as the med bed, because how do you say that? How do you talk about death? People don't want to talk about death. They don't want to talk about the downsides. It's like the, the inserts. They don't, I mean, the inserts are there, but no one talks about really, except for those who are anti-V, that talk about the downsides. But those who are pro-V are like, oh, well, you know, we don't need to talk about that. We'll push that under the rug. But there's always two sides. There's always too much of a good thing. Okay, people all want, people like the whole marketing shit and, you know, look at love and light. But with love and light comes death and darkness. But who wants to talk about that? I do. Because I'm not fooled into these illusions here. I, 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 I'm not under any illusion what I had to do to survive. I know exactly what I had to do to survive. And so, so if I'm going to be a wife prostitute <laughs> as a married woman, find my husband on the internet, I'm going to do something with my life here. No, I'm not going to turn out widgets at some gas station or some factory or process a bunch of orders for some company that could give a shit about me in the long run. No, there's something more that I'm geared for. So if I'm going to be a married prostitute to my husband, then I might as well do something with my fucking life along with that. Okay, so I'm under no illusion of who I am. And I'm, no, I'm not under any illusion of who everybody else is out there. As long as, I mean, I don't say it to their face. Because that would warrant somebody wanting to hit you for that. Because who wants to be called a prostitute? Nobody does. But essentially, that's what it is. You're taking something. No one's going to come off the street and be like, hey, I'm going to go take you in my house and feed you. And give you everything. And no one's going to do that. So you have to have something in trade. Something. Besides my pretty body way back when, it was my brains that also kept my husband a little bit interested. Enough to even marry me. Or he wouldn't have married me if I didn't have something to offer. And it was a quid pro fucking quo. No one's benevolent out there. Everyone's selling something and buying something. Buying and selling each other. But in the first world, it's called marriage and a legal contract <laughs> And whatever in the third world it's called prostitution and the children are the commodities to be bought and sold on the open market but again people don't want to look at things like that because it's too like in your face and so in my world I treat my household as a business and I do everything I can to keep the cost down so that way the high yield my husband develops can go towards his comfort and our necessary expenses. And so he feels he's getting a great return on his investment without compromising my body, mind, and spirit in the process. And so some women get screwed to death. Some women have so many babies that they don't survive their families. Some women get screwed to death. A lot of women, almost every woman, until she gets the fuck out or the, the, the marriage disintegrates because the children became too much of a stress for everybody. And so... I only need the basics and a computer and a phone to keep in contact with him and the world to manage our day-to-day -day life. I invest in food, education, and climate control. And I have no health insurance because I don't need well baby visits because I don't have any kids or well adult visits. And if there is an emergency like a car crash, I have medical payments with my medical insurance. And if it's my fault, medical payments. If someone else's fault, their insurance. If they have no insurance, then it goes back to my insurance, the uninsured motorist or medical payments. Okay. And then after I get treated, then I go home and heal and go through the agony of rebuilding from some kind of blunt force trauma. All right. But, um, but I barely drive. And so statistically getting into a car accident that would cause me to lose limbs would be very low, but never zero. I, whenever I get in a car, it's a gamble. Whenever I go travel with my husband, it's a gamble. Whenever I do anything, it's a fucking gamble. All of us, it's a gamble. Walking down the street's a fucking gamble, okay? But is it a good gamble or is it a bad gamble? And that's essentially what we have to figure out. What kind of gambling are we doing? High risk or low risk? I'm more of a low risk gambler than a high risk gambler. 
just going to grocery stores to gamble. You never know what you might, you know, in, in, encounter. But it is, you know, but that's the thing. You learn how to gamble to your benefit. And so iconic American company lays off 1,800 workers, refuses to answer questions about why. Well, I know why. Not, not I really don't know why, but I'm going to make a major speck of a guess. It may not be greed. Maybe they know a lot of people won't survive and they can't afford to take that loss. I don't blame them for not giving a reason because how do you tell Americans they can't trust you to be low cost and high yield? Right now, Americans are high cost and low yield because they're, they have to get treated. The insurance premiums to, to, to pay for your insurance for all your treatments are astronomical. Okay? The rise of the diets and the holistics and the activism was the indicator Americans are declining rapidly with very little tolerance to change. Obviously, the, the, the surge in cancer rates are a huge alarming indicator, regardless of what you blame it on. Okay? Regardless of what you blame the cancer rates on. And ask 10 people where they think cancer comes from, and you'll get 10 different answers. So I just chalk it up to air, food, and water. They're allergic to air, they're allergic to food, and they're allergic to water. And they have issues with air, food, and water, which requires them to be on diets, getting their therapies, and sitting in oxygen chambers. And when you have a starving workforce who can't handle air, food, and water, they'll be dangerous on the job and to each other. It's not a financial issue, an agreed issue. It's also a safety issue. People are dying suddenly every day. And if you look at the health care costs of treating disease and cancers, oh my God, our health care system and people in the health care system are bankrupting themselves and the companies. They have to pay into these programs and it's thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars per person, especially when they're getting diagnosed every day as well as dying suddenly every day. Some people are worth keeping around because the benefit outweighs the cost. But when it's a lot of people in one company, especially large companies like John Deere, the cost outweighs the benefit they got to go move to, to Mexico, where people are hardier. They're not getting so much treatment. Yeah, I mean, they might have, you know, some alternative medicine, but there, it seems that they have a lot more people to work from, not requiring so much, and they can run through the people. What do you mean run through? Well, if someone dies here, they're not paying major amounts of insurance. They're not, you know, paying all these different things that Americans require. Of course, we understand that. And so it's 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 a total financial, and it's it's a smart move, because we are now costing companies and our families so much fucking money in the first world. And so you can read about how much it costs for cancer treatments. And so um, the apeptosis or the the, the program sell death to the Republican Party. I don't know. There's something going on with the whole thing with Trump and the Vance thing. I think they're shooting themselves in the foot purposely. And so we'll have a left wing um, regime with a right wing media. So instead of having the view like we had with Whoopi Goldberg and those people that are in the view, <laughs> then we'll have Candace Owens. Candace Owens, a right wing uh, lady who who has a family and she'll be the voice of the right when potentially Kamala and whoever is she taps to be your vice president, becomes president. Assuming. Now, I could be wrong. It, it, it could be the Republicans coming in, I'll do the Heritage Foundation. That's fine. I can handle both. But from what I see and from what I've from what I've read and all that stuff, everything is gearing towards the uh, Kamala being our next president. All right? Oh, all right. Never argue with someone, period. I don't care if they have a big TV or a small TV. Just don't argue with people. What's the point? Just what's the point? I drank a bunch of milk yesterday. Oh, so good. Okay, so when you drink a lot of milk, yeah, you're going to have phlegm. You're going to have mucus. And that's your body getting the fat, getting the, the amino acids, the vitamin D and everything else. And then you'll cough out whatever waste material that, that's coming out of your body from that immune system activation. And sometimes you'll be farting and pooping too. And so, just FYI, I don't do any PMs. I know most of you know this. So I still get people occasionally, you know, going through PM. And so I do say, I, I came off a little bit harsh yesterday to somebody because I was in the middle of thinking something and they're PMing me something that I was not interested in. And it kind of just kind of pissed me off. And I, I wasn't so mad, but I was just like, dude, it, this is, no. You know, it's only for emergencies. And some people have access to my PM because the people that I know, and it's emergency only. It's not for like, okay, let's socialize. When I'm outside there, socialize. When I'm not outside, leave me the fuck alone. Okay? 
And so that's why I don't do PM because I'm not trying to have people have that much access to me where they can just interrupt me 24-7. No. All right. Um, and so, yeah, I was looking at my Social Security statement and seeing that I made as much as $36,000 out of the, how many years I've worked it was the highest amount. And then every other was like 10,000, 9,000, 26,000, 21,000, 200. I'm like, how the hell did I survive in the Bay Area? I wasn't consistent with the 36. That was just one year because I was working with a school with, I was a um, dating accountability. I was working with Kevin Johnson over there at uh, St. Hope in Sacramento. He was the, the basketball player. He used to be mayor of um, Sacramento, but he was a basketball player for the Phoenix Suns. And so anyway, so that was one year that I negotiated my salary with his wife, who was the chancellor of education over there in the, the D.C. school districts. And so it was my one year of making some good money and learning stuff about the, the databases and running reports and answering to all the different teachers and learning about standardized testing that they do in California. And so that was the one time I made $36,000. Okay. And okay, great. And then that was it. <laughs> So the rest of the time, I was just trying to take care of myself. And, you know, and, and that's the thing. So the, the, the amount, the money that I didn't make, I was taking care of myself. If I were to make 36000 80000 every single year, I would have been sacrificing my body, mind, and spirit for that company, for, the, for that community. And I would have been able to take, get, take on any lifelines. And that's the thing about money. It's like your money or your life. You know, you want to have your baubles and your politics, religion, and science, and all of your 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 trappings of wealth, and all of your cars and boats and 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 entertainment. Well, that comes at a cost of your life. And so, when you don't invest in all the things that people are investing in, then you get your lifelines back. So when I'm at home, I'm calling in sick on a Monday because of PMS or something else, then I'm getting my lifelines back. I'm at home eating food. Watching TV because I can't deal with people emotionally. Anxiety was just like, no, I would be yelling at people at, at work. So better I stay home than yell at somebody at work, right? But people don't look at it like that. They look at it like, oh, you're being lazy. Fucking suck it up. Take a drug. Suck it up. Take a drug. Fuck you. I'm not one. Of, I'm not a drug addict like you. I'm not going to take a drug so I can deal with my peers. I'm going to sit at home and watch fucking TV and let everything run its course. But again... They don't, people don't look at, look at it that way in the work world. They want you to hurt yourself for somebody else. Well, sorry, I'm not your fucking slave. And so I would take a hit and I'd go to another company that could, that could, whatever. So, and so then when I, uh, so in, in 2018, 2019, I think 2019, I made a dollar towards my social security. It's because I had so many write-offs. The money that I made, I invested right back into the company. I bought a desk. I bought computers. I bought, you know, uh, uh, another book deal with, not a book deal, but a book publisher. I invested back into my company. So when I, so when I, at the end of the, at the end of the year, when I was doing all my taxes and I was writing, I did a schedule C and everything I wrote off as much as I could. Cause yeah, it was the phones. It was everything. Okay, then yeah, I, I basically broke even. I didn't get any credit toward Social Security. I didn't have to pay any taxes. But get guess what? I gained lifelines. Holy shit, I gained knowledge. So sometimes you sacrifice the money and the, the credits towards your Social Security so you can gain lifelines. Okay, so that way when I do retire... Maybe I work part time instead of full time and have the social security as part, you know, as part time and work part time. And to then transition another hay flick limit to then work in the next world, whatever that is. Okay? So some people die for money and power while others live for their own life, but you can't have both. Okay? Your money, your power, your fame, your trappings of wealth, and your possible in science or your life. It's one or the other. Those are the trade-offs and the sacrifices. So fine, if you want to make millions of dollars, thousands of dollars, fine. You will sacrifice your life for it. There's always a price to pay for pleasure in paradise. Oh, God. 
So I figured out that really skinny women um, can be really mean. Men too. Tunneled, mean. I mean, not always mean, but mean and tunneled if, if you cross them. If you, if you represent something they, that they like, then they're nice to you. But if you don't, if you get out of line or whatever, then it's like, oh, God, you know, here we go. Okay? And so it just depends. So it's like one or the other. It's black and white with the skinny people. The bigger people, right? People have a lot more abundance. They can, they can switch, switch on you. They'll love you one day, hate you the next, and angry at you the next. And so, so you get three or four different personalities with a bigger person. You get one or two personalities, one personality relative to how you influence them or not influence them. And so you might have like five skinny people that would represent one big person with a billion personalities. And so I just stay away from everybody. I just stay away from it because I don't know what I'm dealing with. I mean, I'll say hi to you and I'll be out there I'll say if, if I'm out there like in the public. But as far as going anything further than, hey, what's going on and we'll bullshit for a minute, I don't get involved with anyone. I don't get involved in their drama. <laughs> Nothing. And anytime you accept gifts, there is expectation. And so even that, that's where you got to be very careful dealing with people. Because you don't know what you're buying, you don't know what you're accepting, you don't know what kind of contract you're signing. And sometimes that contract could be with your life. And so it's better if you can. If you can't, if you need people, if you need people, then you're going to have to sign your life away. Literally. But I figured out that uh, in this environment, you may represent something in people that some people will be violently opposed to. And... When I was in Hawaii, I saw that with the meth head hitting some strange guy that was actually with a backpack, Asian dude with a backpack, reading something, wasn't even paying attention to his surroundings, and some meth head guy, homeless guy, hit him from the behind. And I was like, holy shit. But that's the thing. When people are declining, they get triggered. Okay? Or they say one thing and do another. Or people who are bigger have a lot of personalities, which means that they have a lot of range of emotion, which is why then Chris Farley, Roseanne Barr, and, and Melissa, whatever her name is, she was in, uh, what is it, fake ID or stolen ID or something, stolen identity. <laughs> that was that movie. They have a lot of um, a range of emotion, like John Goodman, who can play so many different characters because they have a lot of diversity. It's the skinnier people who are programmed for something specific, okay? And when they're programmed for something specific, you may violate their programming and you may get, a, you may, you get someone that likes you or someone that hates you and you have no idea what it is. And they can shine it on and you have no idea what you're dealing with. So, I don't do it with anybody. Okay? Especially with how vocal I am on Facebook and people know who I am. <laughs> and so, um, so you don't know what triggers people, so I just stay away from everybody. I just say things on Facebook. As far as bloodlines. Um, yeah. Blood type A and B have a resistance towards diverse information because they don't have enough diversity in their body. That's why they have a hard time with COVID-19. COVID-19 basically is a frequency that brings up so much diversity and then it, it comes up in the population. And when you get exposed to diversity, you may not have the background or the padding or the cushion to deal with that diversity. So then there is decomposition, there's resistance, and there's anger. And so, yeah, that's the thing. And then there's cancers. The cancers come up because those are the different antibodies that are like the understudy. They want to take over someone who is declining because they're in resistance to those who have a lot of diversity within them. And that's even on Facebook. People don't, don't like my information. Well, they have a lot of resistance because of the lack of diversity, lack of new information, being, lack of being exposed to information. And so they have an issue with my information because I'm blood type O and I have a lot of diverse information. But not only just blood type O, I just have a lot of diverse information in my head, a lot of ways of looking at things, and people are like, oh, God, Jillian's stupid, Jillian's this, Jillian's that. And so that's no different than someone being exposed to COVID-19 frequency that brought up information that they can't handle because they don't have exposure to it. And so that's what I'm saying. If our O plus or O negative, the ultimate blood types to be, I don't know if the RH factor is a good thing or a bad thing, but it's still balanced. O positive, O negative, it's still balanced. It's still chemical reactions. Okay, and so the African population, yeah, white and Mexican, you know, have a lot of predominant blood type O's. And of course, there are blood type A's and B's in the African population, but predominantly the Africans and in, in, in the Hindus and the Latins and even some of the whites have blood type O. 
But the ones that are blood type A and B, you have to really build up, build up a padding of diversity. And yeah, infection. And I don't know if, if you can handle a little bit of infection at a time to build up your your uh, pressure of information, survivability. Okay? And so, um, yeah. So the money you did not make was when you saved yourself and you stayed home and stayed safe and you did what needed to be done. All right. The days of retiring to Florida are over because, yeah, hurricanes. Holy shit. Barack Obama and Michelle Obama endorsed Kamala Harris for president. All right. Well, this is a time where I am going to reverse what I thought about Obama and, and the Obamas. Back in the conspiracy world, I hated Obama because it was all the conspiracy stuff and Alex Jones. And so I was very radicalized against Obama. I liked him in the beginning and then the conspiracy world crept in and then it made me not like him. And now I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Bring in her. Bring in Kamala. Bring in whoever. I don't care. Let uh, And the whole thing with the Olympics? Okay, well. <laughs> we're heading into, yes, Eurovision. Have you seen Eurovision? The, what is it? The saga of something? <laughs> I was thinking, you know what? That's exactly, Eurovision, the Hunger Games, all that. You could say it's bad. You could say it's good. It doesn't even matter at this point. Diversity is diversity. Colorful people. Be the one to survive. Be the one to stay home and stay safe. Be the one not to be a prostitute to anyone. Stay at home and improve yourself. Expand your brain. Release the demons. Feel the pain and suffering. I don't feel too much pain today. Okay, really at all. I mean, I know it's here. And I'm gaining the range of motion, but it's very slow. I'm not going to force it. Like when I'm in the shower and it's hot water, I my friend was telling me to, to do like a therapy where I would walk my hand up and up the, <laughs> the shower. And I did a little bit, but I'm not, I'm not going to force it. I'm just going to let things happen gradually. Okay. But I do, I am seeing very slow improvement. All right. So, you know, this is the time to stay home and stay safe. If you can, if you can't, if you, if you're already resigned to not trigger the next hay flick limit, then enjoy whatever you're doing. Don't take my stuff as personal. I say what I say because I have the freedom to say it. I'm not targeting anyone specific and I'm not imposing my way on anyone. I just say what I say. I have observations. I say what I say. And so if you're comfortable with who you are, then it doesn't matter what I say. No different than when people say stuff about me. I Okay, yeah, I get it. I understand why you'd have an issue with my information. I'm calling you a prostitute. I'm calling myself a prostitute too. What did I have to do to land my husband? Oh, I had to do a lot of things to land my husband. Okay, he's a, he, <laughs> my husband is, 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 oh, he's a man. But I had to calm some of that shit down so I don't get destroyed in the process. Some women will get destroyed by their boyfriends and husbands and whoever in the process. I'm not going to be that one. I'm not the one to be destroyed by anyone. Okay? But I, I'm under no illusion what I had to do to get married. How many women out there are under the illusion that what they're doing was so respectful? Yeah, I guess it is. You want to call it something else. But in, in reality, marriage and, and family is legalized prostitution and human trafficking. What else are you going to fucking call it? Your kids belong to the state. They don't really belong to you. So get yourself right. Figure it out. Stay home and stay safe. Try not to enslave your 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 your, your wife. <laughs> figure out how you want to, to transition to the next world if possible. If not, then yeah, you can call your legalized prostitution, marriage, and family. But in all reality, it's the suffering that you're perpetuating. It's the suffering. And then you have to get treated and then put down as humanely as possible. Yeah, there you go. You have the med beds for that. You can have your own little med bed at home. All right, bye.